Yo, what's going on, guys? Goji Center just uploaded a video. Lo and behold, it's a skull crawler being massacred on the thumbnail. Every video, I swear, making a skull crawler one of your favorite kaiju is the worst mistake you can make because every Goji Center video is just skull crawlers getting whopped. But either way, subscribe to Goji Center. They're almost at a million subs. Leave a like, subscribe here too, or I'll come to your house and kiss your father, and let's do it. <laughs> can Skull Island survive the Night Feeder? Today, the existence of an entire biome is at stake upon the arrival of a true monster. Oh That's my God. right, a new predator has moved into town. A creature so evil and cruel that it will make any other crazy monster look like a teddy bear. The terrible <laughs> night here. In this episode, we will put this entire island to the test, along with its terrain, creatures, and inhabitants, to see if they can put up a fight or are destined to become a pile of corpses. This is the supernatural against an entire ecosystem monster versus monsters so sit back subscribe and hold on real tight as we uncover the aftermath of the night feeder against skull island okay i'm calling it now it's going to be able to decimate most of the ecosystem but kamazots the giant bat kaiju lives under skull island it has a sonic roar so powerful that it can make humans explode into jelly there's no way that thing could beat kamazots this episode will blend the supernatural with the grounded realm we live in, given that the creature we are focusing on today is armed with inexplicably powerful weaponry. To have a good idea of what would happen if the Night Feeder stepped foot on Skull Island, we first need to understand what this thing really is and what it's capable of. This Night Feeder was no small animal, but it wasn't too huge either. In Jendi Tarnatovsky's Primal, all creatures don't necessarily have a set size. These vary according to how powerful they appear on screen, or how weak, depending on the oppressant that they are currently facing. We didn't really get to see it for too long, but by looking at some images, we can tell that this guy was around the size of a large Suchomimus. Its overall shape seemed to be raptor-like, with a blend of other dinosaurs such as a Baryonyx with its elongated snout and Therizinosaurus thanks to its very long claws. This slender build allowed this night feeder to move at extremely fast speeds through the forests aided with good night vision and fast reflexes. And if this wasn't enough, this animal could emit a deafening screech which strongly irritated, wounded, and disabled anyone unfortunate enough to hear it. But we have a little problem here. If we're going to migrate all these attributes to a more realistic universe, we need to account for something we like to call cartoon physics, Ooh. which the Night Feeder relied heavily on in this show. So how can something like this be plausible in real life? The best we can do in this case is assume that this Night Feeder is composed of materials and gifted with abilities that are purely fictional. The perfect example of this is its claws. As we've seen in the show, these can cut through literally anything with no resistance. The only way this would be possible in real life would be if these claws were composed of a material that is practically unbreakable. That's pretty much what I figured too. He's got like Wolverine claws or like adamantium or something uh, not of this world. Stronger than titanium itself. But that's not all. These would also have to be sharpened along the edges if these were to actually be able to inflict clean cuts not lose any sharpness in the process and also be powered by extremely strong musculature, be fastened by durable tissues and move at supernatural speeds and an unbreakable bone structure. Yes, we have to keep the supernatural element here or else this wouldn't make any sense. It's literally just All Wolverine. Attributes combined gives us a creature that is almost invincible in real life. This animal would also look a little different than in the cartoon. So here we recreated a more realistic form of a night feeder. Oh my Something God. Anatomically true to a real life animal and fitting for our Skull Island scenario. That's like arguably so much more epic than the actual version two. That's so well done, holy crap. Now that we have our more realistic night feeder, let's now drop it on Skull Island. Oh, As oh, oh. mentioned in previous episodes, nearly every animal on the planet seeks to meet its biological needs in order to be successful in any biome. Breathable air, water, food, body temperature, and shelter. The night feeder, however, is not your typical animal that can just roam around at any time. No, we must also mention that this animal does suffer from an extreme case of photophobia, which is basically discomfort in bright light. But in the night feeder, case, it's discomfort in any moderate light. That's right. As we continue the episode, we'll discuss why this is bad for the Night Feeder. So having said this, we now know that most of the Night Feeder's actions will take place under the cover of darkness, which will ultimately suck for a lot of the creatures we're about to discuss. We'll go over the main ones really quickly, starting with the Skur Buffalo, which would most likely serve for nothing else but a source of 
of food and entertainment. That yeah, sucks. It turns out that this nightmare doesn't necessarily <laughs> kill to eat, but it also kills just because this thing finds pleasure in witnessing its victims feel fear. Hog would have such beef with this creature, dude. And it's also disgusting. enjoys the act of killing and seeing body parts fly all over the place, since this thing literally wields unstoppable cutting power. Not to mention that this animal prefers to kill armored creatures. And knowing Skull Island, there's tons of that here. Drinking water wouldn't be a problem if it gets ambushed by a mire squid, as its claws would literally make instant work of these soft, squishy tentacles. Icarus tigers would be able to detect an ominous creature nearby, but would quickly get dismembered by a swift attack. But it's a freaking Icarus tiger. I guess it makes sense. The night feeder is just such a super supernatural monster, but these tigers are jabmongous, dude. Death jackals, snakes, vine stranglers, and the mother long legs would easily be dispatched by the night feeder. But Come on! But a more robust animal, such as the spore mantis, which is literally a walking tree. So it turns out that Primal does showcase the night feeder effortlessly cut through thick logs with just one swing. So unfortunately for these creatures, which could now grow as big as redwoods, would be rendered to wood chips if they encountered a night feeder. Okay, but hear me out. Skull crawlers are constantly hunting during the day, all times of the day, really. And all the places to hide in Skull Island where the thing could camp out may already have an ambush predator waiting nearby. They'd kill it in the day, perhaps. Now, let's talk about ambush predators. Uh, thank you. <laughs> for example, hunt in the water, too deep for the night feeder to approach from the shore. They would still move too slow to avoid a lethal swing from the night feeder. Siren jaws are a bit different. The only way these could kill the night feeder is if it literally steps inside its mouth trap. But the night feeder is too big for this, meaning that the only way to attack the night feeder would be by a setup ambush. But being a predator that moves and attacks really quickly, it only means that its reflexes would also have to be just as quick, making Damn an it. attack on the night feeder a suicidal act. Oh. So what can possibly beat this thing? Skull crawlers? No, if this thing can smash <laughs> through entire tree trunks, it's possible that not even the big skull crawler, Ramorak, could stand a chance against this night feeder. That's right, 100% of the time, this night feeder would detect the skull crawler first, running from one direction to the other, inflicting thick cuts capable of dismembering the skull crawler in seconds. So is there anything that can fight back? Let's find out. Okay, but that one scene with the big... Okay, just shut up, Johnny. It's logical. You love skull crawlers too much. If you're enjoying this episode and want to hear a more in-depth discussion, check out this video on the Beast Hub podcast. Whoa. Looking back at all the carnage left by the Night Feeder, there is nothing that would have stopped this from leaving evidence of its wrongdoings. As daylight begins shedding light on the Night Feeder's mess, there would be certain creatures around here that will take note of the evidence. The first being... You guessed it, Kong. Yeah, dude. Now, in retrospect, it's actually possible that Kong might have heard the butchery happening during the nighttime, instigating two scenarios. One, he goes out in search of this animal in the dark. Bad idea. Remember that this animal can cut through literally anything, anything including this animal's leg. Now, to be fair, Kong's leg would be a lot thicker than any tree trunk. That's if we are referring to big 337 foot tall Kong. We 1973 are. Kong's legs would be fair game to get critically injured and perhaps risking it to get killed if he's no oh longer my able God. to stand up. Bigger Kong would still get injured, but not badly enough to handicap him, Oof. allowing him to take off at a safe distance until the next morning. Which leads us to our next scenario. Number two, Kong wakes up the next morning and sees the aftermath left behind by the night feeder. Corpses covering the forest, maimed guts, body parts, bones all over the floor. Stuff that was just killed, but not eaten. We'd like to imagine that Kong acknowledges the circle of life and knows that some of these predators hunt to eat because they have to. I think Kong would recognize that it's a decimating invasive creature in his ecosystem. Much like how he hates skull crawlers too, it's invasive. You don't belong. You know, or else they'll die. Except this one doesn't. And seeing a bunch of dead animals lying around without being eaten only means that there's a creature around here that must be eliminated. But it's daytime and night feeders aren't active right now. It is now that we'll discuss another detrimental attribute of the night feeder. This guy will always secrete a tar-like 
oily substance from all parts of its skin. This, in turn, will stick to anything that this thing makes body contact with. Leaves, trunks, the floor, almost everything, leaving a trail of gooey stuff behind. Kong, being a smart titan, will eventually notice this stuff and most likely end up following this trail to its source, whatever it may be. A cave, tunnel, oh. and crevice. Here, Kong can either, one, pummel this shelter, exposing the night feeder to broad daylight, rendering it defenseless and easily crushed, or two, the shelter caves in on top of the night feeder, or the entrance is sealed shut by Kong. This animal would be able to dig its way out, but it would have to be done in broad daylight. Either way, this particular scenario proves too much for the night feeder. I believe this a thousand percent. That monkey is the guardian. He'd find his He'd beat him up but for is sure. This the only animal that can kill this creature. Let's discuss the final weakness that this night feeder has. It's going to be Kamazots, isn't it? Is also flammable. That's right. Oh. Now photophobia is beginning to make more sense. Anything bright, such as fire itself, is something that the night feeder is literally terrified of. Simply because once this makes contact with its skin, the entire creature would catch on fire, killing it in a matter of moments. Interestingly, there is an animal that would actually fare better against the night feeder than most other animals. The magma turtle. Oh yeah! As the name suggests, this animal's insides are swimming in magma, meaning that if a stupid night feeder just so much <laughs> as touches this turtle, and it's game over for the demon raptor. What else? In Primal, the night feeder was ultimately killed by spear, a hominid using fire. There just so happens to be a group of people here on Skull Island known as the Iwi. I didn't We'd even like think of them. that after running into dead corpses and seeing this black tar, they'd eventually figure out that this crap is flammable, discovering its weakness and go right after it, or always carry fire with them. After this, it would only be a matter of time before the Night Feeder will fall prey to some of these humans. Believe it or not, there could be a creature that could actually, by definition, hunt down the Night Feeder. The Psycho Vulture. Yep, this oh, yeah. animal here can fly in groups of many individuals, go on crazy killing sprees, and fire lightning. Yeah, just one strike of these can spell doom for this Night Feeder. Just gotta pause it right there. That's the most beautiful little photo description I've ever seen of these. I went too big. I assumed Kamazatsu it wouldn't be necessary. Plus, he's not technically part of the Skull Island ecosystem. He just lives in the tunnels under Skull Island. That's crazy looking. But what about Kamazots? Whoa! Realistically, this Titan would almost never make contact with the Night Feeder, since most of its attention while active <laughs> would be on radiation-rich animals of Titan proportions. So it wouldn't necessarily waste time on a Night Feeder. These animals would most likely stay far away from each other's way. Wouldn't waste time, but could kill it. All right, we both win this one. But as discussed earlier, while it is true that this night feeder would be able to lay waste to most of the animals here in Skull Island, it won't be able to kill everything. Beginning from day one, it's likely that its days would be numbered in this island. Skull Island will hold its title as the land of death, even for the terrible night feeder. If it wasn't for its flammable weakness, this would have been a different scenario. If you enjoyed this episode and want to see more monsters, more Skull Island, and more simulations, subscribe Ring that bell, and we'll see you soon in the next episode. Dude, that was crazy. That was a beautiful video, start to finish. Skull crawlers got no respect, but they barely get respect. I think this video was perfect. It covered everything beautifully. So yeah, I, I just skull crawlers just don't. They aren't the alpha. They're just awesome in their own way. I hope to see more Kamazots videos though. I feel like we need more Kamazot stuff in this world. Like, what if Kamazots went against all the other Titans or stuff like that? That bat doesn't get nearly enough attention. But yes, leave a like on the video, subscribe for more awesomeness. Obviously subscribe to Goji Center. They're almost at a million, dude, and I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>